So folks, is, uh, is this the place that they requested the Bible study? Because there's a whole bunch of drunks up there. A whole bunch of drunks up the street. So this must have been the place that requested the Bible study. Welcome, folks, to the concert night Bible study. And we've got Pink here. Who's here to see Pink? I think there might be some people out there here to see Pink and try and learn a little bit about the truth about love. So we've got the Truth About Love Tour with Pink. Now, when Pink tells you the truth about love, she'll say, here's the truth about love, and she will flip you off and probably punch you in the face after cussing you out. So in, in her eyes, the truth about love is about sex outside of marriage and drunkenness and her truth about love. You watch tonight. She'll be up on the Jumbotron and she'll say, what's the truth about love? And she will flip you off. Mark my words. That is her truth. But Jesus Christ said, I am the truth. I, I am the way. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus Christ is the truth. If you guys want the truth about love, take out, go home, and dust off your Bible and start reading it. It's very easy to know the truth about love. It won't cost you a $100 concert ticket, just maybe $5 at Walmart. You can go and buy a Bible if you don't have one or you probably have several at your house, it's that thing on the shelf that has a half inch of dust on it, wipe it off and read it and obey it. So what is the truth about love? Well, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That is Jesus' truth about love. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I command? Now, maybe some of you have been to a wedding and you've heard, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. While you were uh, checking out the bridesmaids' dresses or, uh, or recovering from the night before, maybe you've read 1 Corinthians 13. That will give us a little insight into the truth about love. If you have your Bibles with you, if you pink fans have your Bibles with you, let's open them up to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And where are we? Now in the King James Version, it actually calls it charity, and in other versions calls it love. So since this is the truth about love tour, we will use the word love as opposed to charity here in the King James. And it says, Love suffereth long, and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly, or seeketh not of her own. It is not easily provoked, and it thinketh no evil. It rejoiceth not in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. Beneath, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Love never fails, but where there be prophecies, they shall fail. Where there be tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part... Uh, uh, hold on, the wind's blowing it. If you guys got your Bible app, open it up. The wind's blowing around my Bible. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child... I spake as a child, I understood as a child, and I fought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. Hold on. No, I just lost my place. The wind is blowing my pages around. But then we will see face to face. Now, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known, and abideth these, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. So there's your biblical definition of love. That is the truth about love. So that's the truth about love, folks. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Going to a pink concert is not keeping God's commandments. The Bible says, uh, I, will put no, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Folks, you're to set no wicked thing.
playing before your eyes. And you are going to be going into this Pink concert watching a bunch of, of women, people gyrating around on stage, a bunch of wicked dancers. It says expected. Expected to We only have one person talking on the on the board at any one time. Uh, not on the board. No, I mean four people gathered. Uh, there's there's more than four people. No, I'm talking about out of their open. This is the expected. This doesn't say maximum. That says expected. I didn't expect here. I didn't expect that many. What I'm saying is we're not blocking the side. So we're not blocking. Group. Actually, we're not allowed to go past right. that line right. with our stuff. Right. So the sidewalk, this is the public sidewalk. We just want to make sure we're keeping that clear. Yes. So that's not an issue. Yes. Uh, actually, the one, I think the other one. Uh, yeah. He, he knows this very well. Okay. Yeah, he's the one who asked me for to check it out. Yeah, about the one I was in. He knows this extremely well. You asked, asked him. We have never tried. Sure we're not talking about you. I'm not talking about you all. Just someone else. Right? Oh, we don't. We don't want problems. We're drastically out. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. Where were we? We were talking about the truth about love and what Jesus commands. You guys don't want to know the truth about love? Then you wasted a lot of money on your ticket. These people don't want to know the truth about love, Jeremiah. They have wasted a lot of money on a ticket considering they want to come to a tour about the truth about love. I can save you guys a lot of money. You can rip up your ticket and go home now. The truth about love is right here. B-I-B-L-E, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth, Holy Bible, go home, dust We're it off, and crowned. read it. He had a name written, and no one knew but himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, white and clean, followed him on white horses, and he himself will rule him with the rod and of honor. He himself treads the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Jesus, your servant. Not going in there. Not going in there. And it's on his, he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, every day he will bow one day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can do it willingly or you can do it against your will. Oh, and he's worthy. What, what sin is not worthy of you devoting your life to, devoting your soul to? Only the Lord Jesus Christ is worthy. I want to tell you about white. I want to tell you about white for the light. The light that the Christian is to be. The light in the darkness. Not hidden under a lamp. Not hidden inside the church. The Christian is to be light. you got to go to where the darkness is. Not as the darkness, as the light. God's calling you to be light. If there are any of you there, you say, I want to follow the Lord. you got to separate from the darkness. you got to be light to the darkness. Woo! Oh, in Matthew 5, 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Oh, but Jesus said, right after our, your favorite verse, John 3, 16. We got John 3, 18, that the light, this is the condemnation. Right. The light came into the world, and the men hated the light because their deeds were evil. They hated light. Jesus said, the servant is no greater than his master. If you're going to follow him, they're going to hate you as well. If you're going to be light, if you're not going to be light, you're not a follower of Christ. It's not enough to say, I, I love Jesus. Yeah, I, I love Jesus. But I'm going to continue to live like the world. If you're not light, you're darkness. If you're not white, you're pure. You're tarnished, you're stained, sin stained. you got to repent. You've got to turn away from the 
sin, if you want to be made righteous, made clean. We care for your soul. That's why we're here today. If we didn't care, if we said, oh, let him go to hell, then we'd stay home. I'd save my money. I'd save my voice. But no, Christ has called us to be light. Oh, light for the desire that fills you. Matthew 6. Let's talk about white as light. Matthew 6, the lamp of the body is the eye, and therefore if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Check your desire, folks. Those that say, I'm a Christian, say you're following Christ. Is your desire evil? Is it for darkness? Then you're full of darkness. There's no compromise. Oh, right. Right for the robes and for the cleanness of the holiness that you can be perfect from your sin. You can be washed. You can be made white as snow through the blood of Christ if you'll turn from your sin. Follow Christ. You'll be white. White as snow. Pure. Holy. Psalm 51 says, Purge me. I shall be clean. Wash me. I shall be whiter than snow. Isaiah 1, Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, Here's the red and the white king. Listen up, man. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. If you'll turn, we're here to tell you about salvation. We're here because time is short. You need to take it. Your, your eternity serious. You need to take your eternity more serious. God is here to change your future. He's here to let you know you need to turn from the way, the wicked ways of destruction. You need to repent, turn from your sin, and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And your sins can be made white as snow. Your past sins. You do not continue in sin. Forsake your sin. And those sins will be white as snow. A sin. But the Bible says all have chosen their own ways and believed the lie. But the Bible says once again, it's appointed unto man that wants to die, right. then the judgment come. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that while we were against sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall to believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But listen, the Bible says who does, who does not believe is already condemned. The Bible says this is the condemnation that might come in the darkness, but the darkness did not comprehend it because their deeds were evil. Listen, the Bible says, behold, the God of the Lord is everywhere or beholding the evil and the good. But the Bible says you cannot have your sin and have your God at the same time. You have to be set apart. You have to be a chosen generation. You have to be a royal priesthood. You gotta be sin free. You gotta be sinless like the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Listen, the Bible says whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. And you know that he came to take away our sin and in him there is no sin. Listen, the Bible says, whoever sin has never seen God or known God. Listen, people, do not be deceived that he who ever practices righteousness is righteous. Just because our Father in heaven is righteous, but the Bible says, he who sin is of the devil. That's why you sin because you are the Father of the devil. That's why you go to these places because you are the of the devil. That's why you worship these idols because you are the devil, because you are your father Satan. But the Bible says, because the God of this world has blinded your eyes that you cannot see the glorious of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen, for the Bible says in this, he says that you know that God has came to take away our sins. He was manifested, he might destroy the works of the devil. But the Bible says we cannot sin because we are born of God. The Bible says because our seed remains in us. The Bible says whoever abides in Christ does not sin. Because the Bible says we produce fruit in Christ and Christ Listen, the Bible says we live in Christ and the Bible says we should shun sin because he says whoever names the name of Jesus Christ shall depart from their iniquity, depart from your sin, turn from your filth, turn from your disgusting ways, turn from your wicked ways. But the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom.
wisdom. But the Bible says fools despise the wisdom and instruction. Listen, the Bible says walk not in the path of the unrighteous, but the Bible says prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. But he says this in the scripture, people. He's telling you this today. He says, now the axe is already laid at the root of the tree, and every tree that does not bear good fruit will be hewn down and cast into the fire. Listen, you will be cast into the everlasting lake of fire if you do not repent. Because the Bible says, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Right. But he says in the word of God, he says, if you do not repent, you will all likewise perish. But the Bible says, Whoever calls in the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. But it's more than that, people. You got to turn from your sin. For the Bible says in Isaiah, he says, Seek the Lord while you may be found. Call upon them while you are still near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous man in his thoughts. Let, the, let them return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon our God. Listen, people. Do not profess that you know God. But the Bible says in all thy works, you deny God. In your abomination, in your disobedience, even unto your good works, the Bible calls you a reprobate. Listen, people. The God of the Bible is angry with your sin. He hates your fornication. He hates your lying. He hates your adultery. He hates your idolatry. Listen, people. God is trying to change you today. Listen, the Bible says whoever has a son has life. And the Bible says whoever has life has the son. Listen, the Bible So you guys are living up to pink songs at least. At least pink is honest. She sings songs called a slut like you and a hooker. Uh, let's see, she sings a song, Oh My G.O.D., which is blasphemous. Sings a song called God is a DJ, which is blasphemy. Everything in her songs is a bunch of F this and F that. Wicked, foul mouth, and you people are supporting her. You know, I'm not sure which ones are worse. All the stinking drunks up the street or you pink fans supporting a bunch of wickedness and debauchery. And more middle-aged women who can't grow up. Middle-aged women trying to squeeze themselves into their daughter's miniskirts thinking they are all that. Let me tell you something. If your life is demanded of you this day, somebody's going to have to recognize your body in the morning looking like that. What an embarrassment that you went out living it up in your sin, living it up in your sin, getting drunk, cheering for pink, cheering for all the wicked lyrics or wickedness on stage, and a drunk driver takes your life this very night, and some relatives got to recognize your body in the morning dressed like a crack whore. What a shame that your body's going to have a li The most respectable thing on your body is going to be your little tag on your toe when somebody has to recognize your body in the morgue dressed up like a crack whore and uh, with a big smile on your face and you went to the pink concert and got wasted. That's going to be the most, uh, the most modest thing on your body will be your toe tag when you're at the morgue. And the people have a hard time identifying you. They'll say, I've never seen this hooker before on the street. Where's she from? Nobody's going to know that you're actually uh, an upstanding citizen in your community. Folks, there's no fear of God before your eyes. It's time to get right. You guys understand how many drunks are out on the street. A guy like this. Look at a thief. Do you know that thieves cannot inherit the kingdom of God? Hey, police, uh, we got a thief over here. This guy with the orange hat. The guy with the orange hat is a thief. No, no, yeah, he throw away the evidence. Look, we got thieves out on the street. So not only, let's see, what do we got? We got, we got uh, people, you guys aren't even, aren't even up to the level of prostitutes because at least prostitutes charge. You guys are giving it away for free. She's a prostitute. Uh, we've got thieves. We've got lesbians and homosexuals. We've got people that love their sin. 
I give it away for free. Yes, this guy gives it away for free. Yes. That is the worst offer I've had uh, in 2013, I guarantee it. <laughs> Folks, it's time to get serious with God. Time, you have no seriousness before your eyes. Do you understand how many drunk drivers are going to be out on the street this very night? Drunk drivers out on the street. Yeah, take that picture. Tag it on Facebook. Show everybody. And this day, your life might be demanded of you. And God sends out guys with banners and bullhorns commanding you to repent. And all you want to do is mock and scoff. And in the last day will come mockers and scoffers. This is Peter must have had a vision. Peter must have had a vision of what St. Patrick's weekend would be like in Charlotte, North Carolina. And he said, we have spent enough time in the past doing what the pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. That sounds like the blood syrup for Pimp's uh, Truth About Love Tour. I think that describes Pimp's Truth About Love Tour. It says, for you have spent enough time in the past doing what the pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. And they think it's strange that we do not plunge with them into the same flood of sin, and they keep abuse on us. But they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Homosexuals, get right with God today. Leave your homosexuality. Drunkards, leave your drunkenness. Here's some good advice from the words of Jesus Christ, from the mouth of Jesus Christ. Go and sin no more. If you're a drunkard, stop getting drunk. If you're a liar, stop lying. If you're a lesbian, go find a good godly man and leave your lesbianism. If you're a if you're a fornicator, zip up your pants. If you're a porn watcher, if you're a porn watcher, turn up the computer, pull up your pants, and get right with God and open up your Bible. If you're an immodestly dressed woman, go home and put some more clothes on. The streets are filled with perverts. Hey, we got the perverts right here. You don't have to go 10 feet away from you. There's already a group of perverts, and you walk around there advertising, advertising like you're giving it away for free. Folks, get right with God today before it's too late. Turn from your sin. Cry out to God for mercy before it's too late. Get right with God today. He will have mercy upon you if you will turn 180 degrees, lay your sins down the foot of the cross, and not return to them. Go and sin no more. Here, here's what God, Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery. This will be good advice for you women.